Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set respawn locations and make your character respawn there when they die. So I won't really be showing you how to kill the player in this one, but obviously I will do a very simple killing just to test it. But this is basically just going to be, you can set the checkpoint location and then it, the player will respawn there. So I'll show you what this is going to look like now. So you can see we have our player. If we walk into this checkpoint here, we die, we should respawn back here like so. So that's where we went into the checkpoint. And then we have this checkpoint here. If we die, we should go back to this checkpoint again. If we go over here, we'll go back to that last checkpoint instead of the other one. So let me just delete these and then I'll get on with it. And also to do this, I'm going to be basing it off of the Unreal docs for respawning. But I'm going to be improving on it and adding my own little stuff to it, such as the checkpoint system. So now that I've deleted that, I'm going to show you how to do this. So what we're going to do first is open up our game mode. So for me, this is my third person game mode which is in content, third person BP, blueprints, third person game mode. But this could be anything that you have it as. This is just essentially the game mode you have for your game. Now, if you don't know what this is, if you have the world settings down here, you should see game mode override. So if you've changed it to something different, it will be here. But if you've still got it as non, it will probably be third person or first person game mode. So like I say, open that up. Also, I should mention, if you don't have this event graph here when you load up your game mode, up near the top, there should be some blue writing saying open full blueprint editor. If you double click that or just click it once, it should take you to the event graph. And what we're going to do is firstly, we're going to get an event begin play. So we just right click and get event begin play like so. And we're going to cast to our character. So for me, this is the third person. So I'm going to drag out and cast to third person character, like so, with the object wildcard as get player character. Now again, this could be first person or whatever you've named it. Essentially, just the character you are playing as and you want to respawn. So now out of this, we're going to bind an event. So we're going to add third person character, bind event to on destroyed, like so. Plug that into the cast, like so, with the target of as third person character. I'm going to drag out of the event and add a custom event like so and you can name this whatever you want I'm just going to call it on destroyed like so and again make sure that that is plugged into the event there and then out of this we're going to get a delay so you can hold down D left click to get a delay like so and I'm going to set this to two seconds but you can set this to whatever you want this is essentially just how long it will take to respawn so when the actor is destroyed two seconds later you will respawn so that is what you would change here for whatever you want that time to be. So then out of the delay, this is where we're gonna actually respawn our character. So if we just get spawn actor from class, this top one here, spawn actor from class, and our class is gonna be the character we want to spawn. So again, for me, that's the third person character, like so. And now the spawn transform is essentially where the player is gonna be. So a transform includes location, rotation, and scale. So this will be where the player is, which direction the player is facing and how big the player is. And so to do this, what we're going to do is over in the bottom here, bottom left, where we've got variables, we can hit plus variable and I'm going to call this spawn transform or spawn location, anything like that that you want. But this makes the most sense for me. So then from a variable type up here, we're going to change it from Boolean to obviously a transform like so. And we're going to plug that in there like that. So the spawn transform goes into spawn transform there. And then you can change the collision if you want to always spawn. So default, always spawn ignore collisions, try to adjust location. So basically that means it's going to spawn inside an object. It will try to move it, but it, it will still always be spawning. Even if it can't move it, try to adjust, but don't spawn if colliding is basically if it's inside something. So it's colliding, it will try to move. If it can't move out of that, it just won't spawn. Or you can have it as do not spawn. So default works good for me. And then out of this, we're going to actually possess this character so that we actually spawn it and can take control of it. So to do that, if we right click, get player controller like so as this is what is going to be controlling the character drag out the return value and get a possess node like so plug that into the spawn actor like so with the return value of the spawn actor going to the in pawn of the possess essentially meaning that the spawn the actor that we spawn hence the third person character is going to be the one that we start controlling and possess therefore we can actually control it and then what we're going to do is we're going to come back up to the start up here so just above event begin play we're going to right click and get an add custom event and we're going to name this respawn like so meaning that when we actually respawn the character it's going to do this again so plug that into the cast so when we respawn it's going to recreate this event here so we can respawn once again so then come back down off the possess and we're going to then call that respawn that we just made. So if you right click and just get a respawn 
like so, and plug that into there like that. And now we can respawn the character as well. And you might be able to do that before the event, but that works well for me. So now we have this, this is what your code should look like. So when we begin the game and when we respawn, we're gonna cast to our character, we're gonna create the custom event for on destroyed. When the character is then destroyed, hence dies, it'll wait two seconds or however long you want. It will spawn our character in the last checkpoint location we have and we'll then start controlling it and then obviously respawn. So we can compile, save and close that as that's all we need to do with that for the moment. And so now what we're gonna do is actually create our respawning blueprint. So what we can do is right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor. I'm just gonna call this respawn underscore BP for blueprint and we can open that up straight away. So what I'm gonna do is add component. I'm just gonna get a box collision like so. Change this to however big you want. I think this will be good for me. And then I'm also just gonna get an arrow. So if I get another component, get an arrow, I just rotate this to be up. And then down in the bottom right where it says hidden in game, if I untick that so we can see it in the game, what this basically does is it just allows me to see where the checkpoint is. So for you, you might want to change this to actually be a proper static mesh, not just an arrow. But for me, this is mainly just for testing so I know where the checkpoint will be. But again, you can put this as whatever you like and do it however you want. I'm also just gonna scale it down to half size, like so. So I think that is good for me. So now if we go over to the event graph, like so, what we're gonna do is just delete these and we're gonna create a begin overlap event for the box collision. So if we select the box collision up in the top left, right click, add event, add on component begin overlap. With the other actor, we're gonna to cast to our character. So mine is the third person character. But again, this could be first or whatever you've named it. And what this basically means is that if it's the third person character, or basically if it's our character that overlaps this event, that overlaps this box collision, is it gonna fire off this code. If it's anything else, it won't bother. So then out of this, we're gonna just come out of the cast. And we're gonna cast again. This time we're gonna cast to our game mode. For me, that's the third person game mode but this is basically the game mode where you have put all the code that we did earlier. The object wildcard as get game mode, like so. But again, this is just your game mode that you've put the code in. And then what we can do is as third person game mode, we're gonna set our spawn transform, like so, plug that in there. And this transform is gonna be either the location of the character or the location of our box collision. So you can choose whichever one you like, I'm gonna do it as a character as there's less chance it will bug out. So drag off as third person character of our cast and get actor transform, meaning it will just get our transform of our player, plug the return value into the set spawn transform. So again, this is gonna get the location, rotation and scale of our player. And now this should work. So if we compile, save this, we can close it. Now just to test, I'm gonna do something to kill the player. So if you open up your character blueprint, which for me is the third person character, but again, this can be whatever you like. I'm gonna just find some space. I'm gonna get a K keyboard event. So if I press the K button out of pressed, I'm just gonna simply destroy actor, which is what you do when the player dies. So when the player dies, you destroy the actor, which then fires off our respawn code. So again, compile and save that. Now what we do is if we just put in our respawn blueprints and place these wherever we want, I'm just gonna scale these up a little bit like so. I think those two locations will be good. Now if we hit play, we can walk around and test this. So if we walk up here, that should reset our checkpoint there. If we press K, the player dies. Two seconds later, we respawn back up here where we first overlapped this box collision. And if we go down, we press K again, we should still be spawning here like so. And again, it kept our rotation. So we go out of this, walk in this way, K, it kept a rotation like that. But now if we go down here to this box collision, so this checkpoint, we press K, we die, we now spawn back at this box collision. And again, this will keep our rotation, location, and scale as this is all in the transform. So now we have spawned here. And if you want it to not be at the edge here, that is just because we are getting the player location. So you can just make this box collision smaller, meaning it will start overlapping when it gets into the center there. But this works perfectly, so I think that'll be it for this video. If we've done everything we want to do, we've created our respawn system, and we respawn at the different checkpoints that we have created around our map, and we respawn with our transform, so it's the same location, rotation, and scale. So like I say, you can put these checkpoints anywhere on your map, and they will work perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. So thanks so much for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.